the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda are most refreshingly cool, like tens of millions of moons. The shade of his feet can relieve one from the burning sun of material existence. After Janava Devi, the eternal consort of Lord Nityananda, celebrated the first Gorpurnima festival arranged by Narottam Das Thakur, Srinivas Acharya, Shamananda Prabhu in Ketri Gram on the banks of the Padmavati River. She brought a group of great devotees, many personal associates of Lord Nitai to Vrindavan. There Jiva Goswami honored her and worshipped her as the senior most acharya of the whole Gaudiya Sampradai. After the disappearance of Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya from this world, this was accepted by all. She was the very Shakti of Nityananda Ram. Our own Prayojana Guru, Srila Raghunath Das Goswami, who was at the time living on the banks of Sri Radha Kund, feeling deep separation after the disappearance of his beloved brothers, Srila Rupa Goswami, Srila Sanatan Goswami. Janava Devi went there especially to bring him happiness. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami came running out to meet her. They bowed to her, they honored her, and they served her. Is everyone able to hear? Janava Devi, our most exalted Acharya, still she lived and served according to her nature. She went to each and every one of the deities of the Goswamis and she cooked for them and had the pujaris offer her own boka made by her own hands. She brought beautiful ornaments and silks from Bengal and offered to each of the deities. Madan Mohan, Govindaji, Damodar, Madhu Pandit Gopinath, Radha Sham Sundar. On, on her way back from Vrindavan, she wanted to come to Eka Chakra, the birthplace of her supremely beloved husband, consort and worshipable Lord, Sri Nityananda Prabhu. Many great acharyas 
joined her when she arrived in Bengal. And they all came with her. <clears throat> her anticipation as she was approaching Eka Chakra Gram cannot be described in mortal words. And the outskirts, they were walking along a simple earthen path. And they saw a very old man. He had a very blank expression. He could only walk with the help of a stick that he held in his hand. He happened to see people coming. And this was a surprise for him. Whoever comes here. There was a large group of sadhus and saints. He looked in all the directions and started walking to approach them. And they came to where he was. But he didn't say anything. <clears throat> there was a big tree. And they invited him, please let us sit together under this tree. I believe it was a banyan tree. As they sat, Janava, her heart was eager to understand the glories of Lord Nityananda and Eka Chakra. So one of the devotees asked this old man, it appears that the town that we're looking at is Eka Chakra and it's in ruins. We always heard about it as a very large, prosperous town. Can you tell us? He said, with a broken voice, yes. <clears throat> I have been born and I have been raised and I have spent my whole life here in Ekachakra Gram. This is a famous historical holy place. Long ago, before even the Kali Yuga began, the Pandavas, when they were in their exile, they lived here. In Mahabharata we read how Bhima killed the Bakasura here. <coughs> Many saints, sages, and rishis have come here. It was a town with many schools, many scholars, many wonderful communities. All the four Varnas lived in prosperity and happiness together here. There was the temple of Mareshwar temple of Ganesh. So many great temples were here. But most of them we do not see. One time many of the greatest astrologers they gathered together here. And through their meditation through their astrological calculations, they all unanimously came to a conclusion that in the near future, the Supreme Personality of Godhead will appear in Eka Chakra and make it a supremely holy place. He will come in his form of Lord Balaram. But then the astrologers went deeper into their reading and became very sad. 
because they understood that none of them would live to see Lord Balaram's birth here. But this was the talk for generations that someday Balaram will appear here. There was a very, very great devotee who lived here. His name was Oja. <clears throat> Between the husband and wife, they had several children, but each one of them died at the time of the birth. And finally, after many years of prayer and sorrow, they gave birth to an illustrious son, who they named Haro. He was a beautiful child. He became a very great scholar. And in his scholarship, he was given the title Hadai Pandit. When he was a young man, his mother and father got him married to a girl from a nearby village who had all the same devotional loving qualities as him. Her name, Padmavati. A few days after the marriage, Hadai Pandit's mother and father both passed from the world which brought them deep sorrow. As time passed, Padmavati was pregnant. And in her pregnancy, she became so bright, so effulgent, so full of joy. And on that most auspicious day, the 13th day of the waxing moon of the month of Mag, <clears throat> the child was born. Previous, there was famine, there was all sorts of difficulties in this area. But the moment that that child was born, everything began to blossom and bloom and became full of prosperity. This child had a lovely, radiant, golden complexion. And from his very birth, had large, lotus-like eyes. His every limb was so perfectly formed, so attractive, and so soft like the petal of a lotus. This old Brahmin was telling Janava and her associates that the entire town of Ekachakra instantly fell in love with this boy. They named him Nityananda Ram. But they didn't know who he was. Because unless the Lord personally, by his will, reveals who he is, nobody can understand. <clears throat> Hadai Pandit and Padmavati were so deeply attached to their little Nityananda. They when he would sit on their lap, they would just embrace him. They, it was indescribably impossible to let him come off their lap. And when he began to crawl, 
everyone called him Nitai. <clears throat> the Brahmin said, one day, for some reason, I was in such terrible distress. And I don't know why, but I took refuge of just seeing little Nitai, the baby. So I ran to Hadai Pandit and Padmavati's house, and I picked up Nitai and put him on my lap. He was as soft as a golden puppet of butter fresh, soft butter. And just by seeing him and feeling his smile beaming upon me and touching him, all my sorrow completely disappeared. I was feeling transcendental happiness. As little Nitai got older, he little older, Padmavati, Hadai Pandit, they, they couldn't bear to not see him. Hadai Pandit had to work, he had to go out and do certain things, but wherever he would go, he would try his best that he never went further away from where he could look at the house and see Nitai. If he went out to his fields, he went to teach somebody, he would always try to stay within the glance because if he didn't see Nitai, he would go mad in separation. This is the kind of love that Nitai was drawing from their hearts. <clears throat> One day, Nitai, as he was walking and running around, he said to his mother, I want to play with friends because they just kept him home all the time. So she started inviting all the little children his age to the house. And then he started taking them out to various parts of Eka Chakra, and he was the leader. Every day he would arrange for them to have dramatic pastimes in acting the Leelas of Lord Krishna. He was the producer, the director. He would arrange with his, organize the different props. He was one of the main actors. And all the friends, they just could not give up his association. <clears throat> he just a tiny little boy. The adults, if they, if they had the good fortune, they'd see from a distance. And they'd be on the bank of this river. The Brahmin said, at, the at that time, that little river that you all saw was a big, wide river, covered on both sides with beautiful, auspicious trees and flowers and fruits and so many butterflies and birds singing. This is Eka Chakra. And on the banks of the river, which is non different than the Yamuna, one of the boys, actually a group of boys, would play the roles of demigods. And one boy had the costume of a cow, Mother Earth, Bhumi Devi. <clears throat> and they came before the ocean of milk in the form of the river. And they were crying, please lessen the burden on the earth. My dear Lord Vishnu, please come and appear. And then one of the boys who was hiding, he said, I will come. <laughs> in Mathura, in the Yadu dynasty. And all the boys would go, Haribo, Haribo, Haribo. Then they said, then they changed the, the scene. And it was very realistic. 
they would go out of their homes at midnight for this one. They'd come out at night and they made, they made a prison house and they had little shackles over the boys who played Vasudev and Devaki and then they enacted Krishna's birth at midnight. And the boy who played Vasudev took a little doll of Krishna and brought him across the Yamuna River here and there they had Nanda Maharaja's house set up and they would bring him to Yashodamai's bed. One boy played Putana, another played Krishna. It was usually Nityananda Prabhu that played Krishna. <clears throat> they played Trinavarta and Shakatasura and Batsasura and Bakasura. One boy played Yashoda and the other boys, they were going Actually, they were very realistic, not props. When they played Krishna and the cowherd boys stealing butter, they would actually sneak into the houses of the people of Eka Chakra and steal their butter. <laughs> and some boys played gopis and they'd complain to Yashodamai, your boy is always doing this. And then Yashodamai, went to bind up Krishna because he was feeding some boys were monkeys eating the butter and Nityananda was Krishna feeding them and Yashodamai chased after and Nityananda ran around and she bound him up and then the two boys played the twin Arjun trees they performed the Rasa Leela the Brahma Vimohan Leela Nityananda played Krishna and lifted Govardhan Hill as one of the boys were boys were Samvatarka clouds and Indra. And when they performed the Leela of Akrura, taking Krishna out of Vrindavan to Mathura, <clears throat> Nityananda Prabhu played a gopi. And nobody could understand. It seemed like a child, a, a child game. But when Akrura was taking Krishna in Balaram, Nityananda fell to the ground, weeping, weeping. He was inconsolable. Some of the adults asked Nityananda, how do you know these pastimes? <clears throat> because what you're teaching these children, exactly the words they're speaking are right from the Srimad Bhagavatam and the Puranas. And the stories are authentic. And you're just a boy. You don't even know how to read yet. And nobody, we haven't even told you these stories. How do you know them so well? Nitai smiled and said, because these are my pastimes. <laughs> he was telling them, but they couldn't understand. Now, these boys, sometimes they would play all day, sometimes they would play till late at night, but all the parents of his friends were so happy. They were just happy that he, they that their children was fine. They never complained. They never tried to stop them. Why you don't come home for lunch? Why you don't come home for dinner? Why you don't come home till late? Why you, we don't know where you're going or when you're going and you're always going and, and they were just little children. This was the power of Nityananda Prabhu's attraction. That everyone had complete love and trust. And the parents love this little boy so much that the perfection of the love for their own children is they could just spend the whole day with Nitai. <clears throat> there are so many stories that take place here in Ekachakra Gram. This Brahman was telling Janava and her associates how Nitai, he started to study and he became such a scholar. 
but still always so playful, always so mischievous, but always so respectful, gracious, humble, and kind to everyone. No one could give up his company. When he was 12 years old, Lord Chaitanya on the Gaur Purnima appeared in Navadweep. And Nitai was sitting, and in his heart of hearts, he knew his beloved master and Lord, Goranga, has appeared on earth. And Nitai literally roared in ecstasy. And everybody could hear this roar, but they didn't know where it came from. And he understood at that time that I must leave my home because I have descended into this worm to help my beloved Goranga in manifesting the Harinam Sankirtan movement in this world. But how will it be possible for me to leave when my parents and everyone else in Eka Chakra are so attached to me? I can't just leave them. So by his own sweet will, everything was orchestrated. <coughs> One day, a sannyasi, no one had ever seen him before. He was a great devotee sannyasi. He arrived at the house of Hadai Pandit with a begging bowl. Hadai Pandit was so happy. He said, please come in my home. Please allow me to feed you prasad. Nitai and Hadai Pandit served the prasad to the sannyasi so nicely. And then they spent the whole night having the sannyasi tell them stories about Krishna. And at the end of the night, <coughs> it was time for the sannyasi to go. <coughs> Hadai Pandit, from his heart, according to tradition, he said, thank you, thank you so much for blessing our home, our family, our children. How can I serve you? The sannyasi was silent for a moment. He said, I am about to embark on a pilgrimage to all the holy places, and I am all alone. I require a companion. Give me your eldest son, Nitai, to travel with me. <coughs> this request was like a devastating thunderbolt on the soft, tender heart of a Daipanda. He was speechless. He stood like a stone pillar. In his mind, he was thinking, he's not only asking for my son, he's asking for my life, my soul, the, the only thing I live for. In those moments, he was pondering that as a spiritual person, when a great sannyasi comes as a guest to your home and he asks something, you can't say no. How could I say no? But how could I say yes? If I say no, I'll be ruined. If I say yes, I will die of separation from my child. What to do? Great personalities evaluate how to make choices according to the great souls in the scriptures. So he meditated on who was in a similar situation. 
it was Maharaj Dasarat. When Vishwamitra Muni came to his home and asked to take Ram into the forest, although it was the most painful, inconceivable challenge of his life for the sake of spiritual principles he gave his son. Hadai Pandit went to his wife Padmavati and told her the situation. And he said, I will do what you say. What is your feeling? Padmavati said to Hadai Pandit, whatever you decide, I accept. <clears throat> Hadai Pandit went to the sannyasi and said, whatever is your wish, let it be fulfilled. Nitai, he's going to take you. Shocking! Nitai, as if it was just any other day. He just, okay. And he started walking away with the sannyasi. Hadai Pandit and Padmavati were weeping tears. It was unbearable. The sannyasi had a small deity of Krishna. His name was Murlidhar. And he gave that deity to Padmavati. Then he left. And Nitai just walked with him without even turning around. When they left the doorway and left the courtyard and started leaving Ekachakra, Hadai Pandit and Padmavati together fell to the ground unconscious. <coughs> Soon the whole town heard the news. They came running to Hadai, Hadai Pandit Padmavati's home. Where is he? What happened? How is this? They saw the parents unconscious, hardly breathing. They were sprinkling water on them and fanning them, and all Hadai Pandit and Padmavati could do is they would get up and just cry out, Nitai, and fall down. Nitai. The people of Eka Chakra. They decided, we must bring Nitai back. We will find that sannyasi. And they all went running in all directions trying to find him. And each one of them was thinking, all the parents, I will tell that sannyasi, I will give you my son, but give us Nitai back. We'll give you, we'll give you so many children, as many children as you want, our own children, but give Nitai back. They were running, scattering like mad people and through the forest, through the jungles, through the fields, through the towns. But Nitai and the sannyasi were nowhere to be seen. And Padmavati, she was holding the deity of Murlidhar. And when she looked at him, she saw Murlidhar's face become Nitai's face. Every time she looked at this deity, she saw the face of her beloved son. For three months, Padmavati and Hadai Pandit could not take a drop of water or a morsel of food. <clears throat> they could not sleep for even a moment. They simply cried Nitai's names. And after about three months, crying out the names of their child, they passed from the world to rejoin him in the spiritual world. <clears throat> At 
that time, all the people of Eka Chakra, they, they lost their hope to live practically. They couldn't bear to see the different places where Nitai performed his leelas. The Brahmin said, you see this tree here? This is where Nitai, it used, it used to be two trees. And when they would be performing their dramas, they would drum from one tree to another, but because it was becoming difficult, Nitai put them together as one tree. <clears throat> you see this little kund here? This is called Padmavati Kund. This is where Padmavati would bathe little Nitai. And you see this here? This is where they made this little tree into Kaliya. And Nitai would dance like Krishna on the hoods of Kaliya. And some of the little children came up like Nagapatnis. He said, everywhere the citizens of Ekachakra looked, they would find somewhere where Nitai would perform his pastimes. They couldn't bear to see it. After he left, the whole town left Ekachakra. Practically everyone. And what was once a prosperous place was abandoned. But I stayed here, the Brahmin said. Why? I'm awaiting the day that Nitai will return. Every day, I'm waiting. Just like Hadai Pandit and Padmavati were always waiting. While they were living, Hadai Pandit would be in such a trance of separation. Sometimes he would see Nitai in his vision. He would say, Padmavati, Padmavati, he's here, he's here, he's coming to sit on my lap. Cook for him his favorite foods. He's coming, he's coming. Padmavati, don't you see? Don't you see? Down the road, it's, it's that sannyasi. And, and, and holding his hand is Nitai. They're returning home. They're coming, they're coming. Can't you see, Padmavati? Can't you see? But then when he realized there was nothing there, again he would fall down Nitai. The Brahmin said, it is in that mood that I have spent so many long years waiting for Nitai to return. And for all these years, all alone, I just walk through Eka Chakra to all the different little places that Nitai performed his pastimes. Remember them and cry. It is my prayer, my only prayer in life, <clears throat> that birth after birth after birth, let me never leave Eka Chakra. Let me remain here, waiting for Nitai to return. And birth after birth, let me give up my body crying out with great feeling of love the name Nitai Chand. The Brahmin broke down and cried. He said, shall I take you to Hadai Pandit's house? John of Devi in great emotion said, yes, please. He took. When they reached Hadai Pandit's house, all the devotees went inside. And that old Brahman, he just he became so overwhelmed with emotion, he could not say a word. 
he just walked away. By that time it was night. The devotees performed Sankirtan. And later on, Ishwari, Janavi Devi, in the house, she had a beautiful dream. There was Hadai Pandit and Padmavati. She never saw her mother-in-law and father-in-law before. And she yearned to see them. And now she was with them. And there was her beloved husband, Nityananda. They were all together as a family. And Hadai Pandit and Padmavati were lavishing so much affection on her. Then the dream changed. And she was sitting with her sister Vashudha and Nityananda Prabhu. They were on either side of him. And he was smiling upon them and speaking to them and offering them his prasad, his garlands. She was again with her beloved. And then that dream disappeared. And in the darkness of that little home, which was now ruins, she cried in transcendental love. Nityananda Prabhu, there's so much I want to say, but I only have six minutes because I have to catch a train. <clears throat> but I'll start somewhere. Nityananda Prabhu was on his tour to the holy places. He began with the sannyasi and then he started traveling alone. He went to Vakreshwar, to Gaya, to Kashi, to Ayodhya, to Mathura, Hastinapur, Badrikashram, Yamunochi Gangotri. He went to Kurukshetra. He went to uh, Dwarka and to Tirupati. Kanchipuram, Srirangam, Kanyakumari. He was going to all holy places. When he was in Pandarapur, he met Lakshmi Pati Tirtha and accepted him as his Diksha Guru. And when he was in that western province, one of the most historical events happened. He met with Madhavendra Puri. Madhavendra Puri was traveling with a group of disciples, including Brahmananda Puri and Ishwara Puri. <clears throat> when Madhavendra Puri and Nityananda saw each other, their joy knew no bounds. They embraced, they wept, they fell down to the ground conquered by love for each other and somehow or other stood up. Nityananda Prabhu said, I have been traveling for so many years to all holy places and the fruit of all my pilgrimage is I am now seeing the highest, purest, deepest ecstatic love for Krishna in the form of Madhavendra Puri. the perfection of my life. Madhavendra Puri could not even speak. When all of the other devotees saw the love that these two great souls had for each other on such a deep, high, transcendental spiritual platform, they were struck with wonder. They never saw anything like this before. When two people deeply love Krishna, it is indescribable the love that they have for each other. 
Madhavendra Puri was the root of the tree of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's entire mission. And Nityananda Prabhu was Lord Chaitanya himself. They spent several days together talking about Krishna doing kirtan. Madhavendra Puri said about Lord Nityananda <coughs> that you are love for Krishna personified. Anyone who sees you, Lord Nityananda, anyone who sees you for even a moment has gained the fruits of going to every holy place of pilgrimage in the universe. Anyone who loves you and appreciates you will certainly be given the highest treasure of love for Krishna. And anyone who is envious of you, how unfortunate and bereft that person is. My life is perfected by seeing the love of Lord Nityananda. You are, Madhavendra Puri declared this, you are ecstatic prema bhakti personified. Somehow or other, it was their destiny by their missions that Lord Nityananda Prabhu headed toward Setu Banda and Madhavendra Puri toward the Sadayu River. After going on this great pill, Lord Nityananda Prabhu at that time accepted Madhavendra Puri as the primary guru of his life. And Madhavendra Puri accepted Nityananda as his life and soul. Nityananda was thinking, my Goranga Mahaprabhu is soon going to establish his Sankirtan movement. In Navadweep. I have to wait. He went back to Vrindavan. He traveled through the twelve forests <clears throat> and then settled at Shingarbat. And in the mood of a little child, cowherd boy, Balaram, he would love to play with all the children. He would hurt cows with them. He would now he's a grown avaduta. He would go and steal butter with the children. He would herd the cows with the children. He would play in the Yamuna with the children. Totally absorbed in his Leela of Balaram. Waiting. When Lord Goranga returned from Gaya to Navadweep to establish the Sankirtan movement and <coughs> Nityananda Prabhu understood it in his heart and immediately he walked to Navadweep. Lord Chaitanya one day with his associates, he said, very soon, in two or three days, a very great powerful personality will be coming to Navadweep to join us. They were wondering, who could that be? And on that very day that he said that, Nityananda Prabhu, without telling anything to anyone, went to the house of Nandanacharya. <coughs> Nandanacharya was a pure, great devotee. When he saw the love and the transcendental compassion of Nityananda Prabhu. He brought him in his house. Nityananda Prabhu said, do not tell anyone I'm here. I'm hiding. He gave him prasad. He washed his feet. He gave him garlands. Lord Chaitanya told his associates, I had a dream. In this dream in front of my house, 
I saw a chariot. What a wonderful chariot. It looked like a chariot that could carry one beyond material existence to the very spiritual world. On the chariot was a flag with a palm tree as the sign of the flag. And standing on that chariot was a very beautiful, extraordinary, powerful personality. Who could he be? His complexion was white like a, like a spring cloud. He had large lotus-like eyes. He had an earring in his left ear. He had effulgent blue turban, chadar, and dhoti. He had a club over his shoulder. His eyes were kind of rolled up as if intoxicated. And he was slowly moving back and forth. I've never seen such a personality like this. So beautiful, so powerful, so attractive. I was thinking that he must be me. I felt such a brotherhood, such a love for him. Who is he? And then this personality in a deep voice repeated again and again, Is this the house of Nimai Pandit? Is this the house of Nimai Pandit? And I ran up to him. And I said, you are, you are an extraordinary person. Tell me, who are you? I feel I know you. And he responded, I am your brother. Tomorrow we will get to know each other. Then he woke up. Lord Gauranga, he went into a trance. He said, I feel that this was Lord Balaram who has come to Navadweep. And Lord Chaitanya went so much into the ecstasy of his mood of Balaram, he said, bring me Varuna, bring me Varuna. And what could they do? Srivast Thakur brought him some Ganga water. <laughs> That's the truth. Lord Chaitanya looked to Srivast and Haridas. He said, go everywhere in Navadweep and find this great personality and bring him to me. They took this order of their life and soul. They ran out. They went for nine hours searching through Navadweep. And they came back and told Lord Chaitanya, we went to the houses of all the devotees, we went to the houses of Brahmins, we went to the temples, we went to the bathing guts, we went to the shops, we went to the marketplaces, we went so many places. We didn't go out of Navadweep, but we went everywhere in Navadweep because that's where you told us to go. There's no clue, there's no hint. We don't know who to find, we don't know where to find them, we don't know how to find them. Lord Goranga smiled. Nityananda can only be found when he reveals himself. He said, come with me. Lord Goranga walked with his devotees directly to the house of Nandanacharya. And there they saw, sitting Sitting in that house was Lord Nityananda Prabhu. Lord Chaitanya and all the devotees bowed down <coughs> and then got up and offered prayers. They came closer. When Lord Nityananda Prabhu saw Lord Chaitanya, He went into such a trance, his eyes would not blink, 
Not a limb of his body would move. He was totally absorbed. He was tasting the beauty of the Lord with his tongue. He was hearing the sweetness of the Lord with his ears. He was smelling it with his nose. He was feeling it with every pore of his body. He was totally absorbed. The devotees never saw anybody like this. It was like a pillar, just in ecstasy. Lord Chaitanya told Srivas Thakur, chant a verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam. And Srivas, he chanted this beautiful sloka describing the beauty of Krishna. When he's with Balaramji and he has these beautiful blue flowers over his ears. And he's just playing his flute, surrounded by gopas and cows, and they're just entering into the forest of Vrindavan. When he heard that, Nityananda Prabhu fell unconscious. Keep ch chanting that verse again and again, Lord Chaitanya said. And Nityananda Prabhu got up and the types of symptoms of transcendental love that were manifesting on him are described by Vrindavan Das Thakur. And Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, for the first time in this Leela, embraced. And when they embraced, they both soaked bathed each other with the tears of their love and fell to the ground and got up and embraced. Devotees began kirtan, gornitai, dance together. As everyone celebrated this most glorious coming together of gornitai and Sri Navadweep chanting the holy names. Train. <laughs> Together, Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda Prabhu established the Sankirtan movement. And I'm going to take a little risk of missing the train. <laughs> Sachi Mata. Sachi Mata accepted Nityananda as her own son. There are many beautiful stories of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda's Leelas with Sachi Devi. One day Sachi Devi tells Lord Chaitanya, I had a dream, a very interesting dream. He said, what was the dream? She said, I saw you and Nityananda, you turned into little boys and you ran on my altar of Krishna and Balaram. And I saw you pick up the deity of Balaram and Nityananda picking up the deity of Krishna and taking them off the altar and running off. And Balaram was saying, you can't do this. And Krishna was saying too, said this is, who are you to do this to take my brother Krishna off this altar? We will give you a good beating. And Nityananda said, your days of being cowherd boys, stealing butter and yogurt and sandesh are over. 
Now you have become Brahmins. Who cares for you anymore? Balaram said, my Lord is Krishna. How can, do you know what will happen to you? If you will go against my brother Krishna. And Nityananda said, I don't care anything for your Krishna. My Lord is Vishwambar Goranga. And she said, and you were fighting over the sweets on the altar. And as you were fighting, Balaram and Krishna were fighting with Gornitai over the sweets and the yogurt and the kheer and everything on the altar. Then Nityananda Prabhu called out, Mother, give me rice. Sachi. And then the dream ended. What do you think of this dream, my son? Lord Chaitanya said, this is a wonderful dream, but don't tell anyone about it. But it solves a mystery in my mind. Because I would regularly see how when we would make offerings to our deities of Krishna Balaram, when we'd come back, half the offering was finished. I was suspecting my wife Vishnu Priya. But now I understand that our deities are very mystical. And Vishnu Priya was listening and she was smiling with great happiness. Then Sachi, Nitya, Sachi said, and Lord Chaitanya agreed, they would invite Nityananda for lunch. So Lord Chaitanya went to Nityananda, who was staying at Srivas Thakur's house. He said, my mother is inviting you for lunch. But behave. Not like a madman. Nityananda said, I always behave properly. You, because you're a madman, you think everyone else is a madman. And they went to Sachi's house, and Gadadha was there, and so many others, and they sat down, and Sachi Mata cooked a beautiful feast for them. And they, she came out and served them with her own hands, with the help of Ishan. And then she went back to get some other preparations. And when she came back, she saw that where Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda were sitting, there were two little five-year-old boys without any clothes on. One had a dark bluish complexion. One had a white complexion. They both had four arms holding the symbols of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And she saw and the little blue boy, she saw, and his chest was Vishnu Priya, the consort of the Lord. She fell to the ground unconscious, and the pot of rice she was holding scattered everywhere. And Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda jumped up and washed their hands and went to pick up Sachi Mat and said, What happened, Mother? What happened? You know, they resumed their original forms. And she just cried. She couldn't say a word. She was in such ecstasy of love. She just went into her room as Ishan cleaned up everything and served them prasad. Then Lord Goranga and Lord Nityananda met Sachimata and she gave them garlands and she gave them sandalwood. And Lord Goranga said, Nityananda is your own son. Love him as your son. And she started to cry. Because actually, Vishwarup was an expansion of Lord Nityananda. She saw her Vishwarup in Lord Nityananda. She said, you are my son. You are my son. To the core of my heart, you are my son. One day, Lord Chaitanya told Nityananda and Haridas Thakur, <coughs> go to every house and everybody you see and give this simple message. Chant Krishna's names. Worship Krishna. Krishna's your mother. 
Krishna is your father. Krishna is your greatest treasure. Krishna is your very life and soul. And whoever chants the holy name, you are my life and soul. So they took this instruction to heart and they were going house to house, person to person, shop to shop, got to got. Without, without considering who was qualified or unqualified. They spoke with such deep love and compassion. Some people, their hearts completely melted. They were transformed. They instantly achieved spiritual perfection. Yes, if Nitai and Haridas are asking me, I must. And in this way, the chanting of the Krishna's names we're expanding. But actually for most of the people, or many of the people, they totally rejected them. You see, by this time, Lord Chaitanya was already having his all-night kirtans at Haridas Thakur, I mean at Srivas Thakur's house, and the people who were proud and were not allowed in, they were angry, they were envious, they were arrogant. They would say, these are the associates of that Srivas and that Nimai. Pretenders, hypocrites, criminals. They should be punished. They should be beaten. They were spreading rumors about them. They're coming to our house this is in the day just to check out what we have. And then at night, they will come and rob us. They're robbers. They're thieves. They should be put in prison. They would blaspheme them terribly. And Nityananda's Balaram, we know his powers. But in this incarnation, he would put straw between his teeth, fold his hands, and with tears of compassion, beg even these people, take the name of Krishna. Take the name of Goranga. If people refused, he would literally roll in the dust at their feet. I only ask this one thing of you. Chant Krishna's names. Worship Krishna. Speak about Krishna. Krishna's your mother, your father, your treasure, and your very life. Just chant, and I will be yours forever. And you will be my life and soul. In this way, they were going about everywhere. And one day they saw the most unbelievable scene. There were these two gigantic, monstrous, demoniac people, drunk with strong wines. Every other word of their mouth was an obscenity. They were roaring like drunken lions violent. Nobody would come near them. They were actually beating each other. And Haridas and Nitai, who are they? They asked some of the people. They said, you don't know? This is Jagai and Madhai. They were born in Brahmin families from very high respectable people. But due to bad association, there is no crime they do not commit. They are so powerful, nobody, even the law, will not come before him. Even the police are afraid of them. They can do anything and everything they want, and they do. Every day, they murder innocent people. They rape women, even the daughters of Brahmins. They burn houses down. They rob, they steal, they kill cows and eat their flesh. They're drunk on wines. They're terrorizing the town of Navadweep. No one is safe here. Nityananda said to Haridas Thakur, 
that so far we have been getting some nice people to chant Hare Krishna and become great devotees. But my Lord is Patita Pavana. Goranga, he has descended to deliver the most fallen. Now pious people are appreciating him. But if we could get Jagai and Madhai to become pure, humble, loving devotees and chant the holy names, then the glories of Lord Goranga will actually be understood by everyone. Let's go, Haridas. Nityananda and Haridas walk right up to Jagai and Madhai and gave that message. Chant the names of Krishna. Worship Krishna. Make Krishna your life and soul. And be happy. Give up your sinful activities and take the name of the Lord. This was total insult to Jagai and Madhai. Kill them! They went to grab Nityananda and Haridas and instinctively they ran away. They didn't have to run away. But this was their leela. They were taking a humble position. Jagai and Madhai were chasing after them. And all the people around were saying, we told you, you are such ignorant fools. We told you these are the most dangerous demons. And you went and told them to chant Krishna's name. And the, the innocent people were praying, 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 and praying to God to protect these two innocent people. And the blasphemers, they were saying, very good, finally, they will, they will be destroyed for their sins by Jagai and Madai, that evil. And meanwhile, the, 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 the two brothers, Haridas and Nitai, were running, running, and they were smiling, and they were laughing, and Jagai and Madai were right behind them saying, catch them, catch them, come back. You cannot escape Jagai and Madhai. Nobody escapes Jagai and Madhai. You get back here, come here, we will catch you. And they were running and running and they were running, but Jagai and Madhai were kind of fat. So they couldn't run as fast. But they were running fast. Nityananda said to Haridas, he said that you... You know, you were beaten in 22 marketplaces. And you know, how are you? Because you... You're so merciful and compassionate. You, please deliver them. And Harida said, you are such a mischievous person. He said, I, I, was, I was delivered by the 22 marketplaces, but because today I'm with you, and you're going and asking these criminal killer drunks to chant Hare Krishna, he said, today my life will end. And Nityananda said, Haridas, it is not me. It is your Lord and Master, Goranga. Nobody has ever seen anything like this. He's a Brahmin, and he's like a king giving orders. Nobody's ever given an order like this. Tell everybody you meet like this, this message. And this way they were running and smiling. And Haridas Thakur, he said, because you have already decided to deliver them, they will be delivered. And eventually Jagai and Made couldn't catch them, but they had to take their violent tendencies out, so they started beating each other and scratching each other and pulling each other's hair. And Haridas and Nitai went to the house of Lord Chaitanya, because every night they would report to him about the day. And they told today, we were almost killed. Lord Chaitanya asked, who are these people? And Ganga Das Pandit and Srivas Thakur explained. They were Brahmins from very good families. But look what bad association did. They murder, they rape, they steal, they burn, they terrorize. Lord Jesus said, If they come before me, I will destroy them. 
Nityananda Prabhu said, No, my Lord, give them to me. <laughs> if these people become pure, humble devotees, your glories will be expanded to the world. Lord Chaitanya smiled. He said, Nityananda Prabhu, Prabhu yes? coming before me like Jagai and Mata. I will, I will pray to Lord Nityananda to be merciful to you. Where did I leave off? Ah, so I have to really fast forward because he, he only gave me two minutes. Krishna. Eka Chakra. <laughs> so, I'll come to the conclusion. One day Nityananda Prabhu was wandering throughout Navadweep, and in the evening he happened to see Jagayan Madha. He approached Jagai and Madhai with the same request. Give up your sinful activities. Just chant Krishna's names. Just worship Krishna. They could not believe that this person is coming back. They roared at him. What is your name? He smiled and said, Avadut. Madhai, in a fury of anger, picked up a clay pot, a liquor pot, and roared, Then I will destroy you! <laughs> and with all of his strength, he smashed that pot on Nityananda's head broke open his skin, and blood poured out. Nityananda Prabhu, with folded palms, said, I do not mind what you have done to me, but it breaks my heart to see what you are doing to yourself. Just take the name of Krishna. This is where real happiness is. Madhai was doubly angry. He picked up another pot and was about to crash it against his head, but Jagai, his heart melted. Seeing Nityananda Prabhu's compassion, he said, No, no, this man is a saint. What has he done to you? Stop, you cannot hurt him. Meanwhile, somebody ran and told Lord Chaitanya what was happening. And he came to the scene in a moment with his devotees running. His eyes were red like burning coals. He stood before Jagai and Madhai like death personified, lifted his arm and cried out, Chakra! The Sudarshan Chakra appeared on his hand. It was whirling like fire. And Jagai and Madhai looked at that. 
They were terrified. Nityananda Prabhu said, My Lord, please. If I have done any good things that have pleased you, if I've done any devotional activities, any pious activities in this life or any lives, I will trade them all to be merciful to Jagai and Madai. Give them your love. Give them your prem. Actually, my Lord, Jagai saved my life. He, he stopped Madai from hitting me again. As soon as Lord Chaitanya heard that, his Sudarshan chakra went away. And he started to cry. He said, Jagai, you have served. You have protected my Nitai. You are mine. You are forgiven of all your sins from all your past lives. And he embraced Jagai. And with that embrace, he gave them love of Krishna. And Jagai cried and fell to the ground unconscious, then came to consciousness. And Lord Chaitanya manifested a forearm form holding the conch shell, the disc, the club, and the lotus flower, the form of Vishnu, right before Jagai. And then the Lord placed his lotus foot over Jagai's heart. Jagai was a perfect Paramhamsa devotee. When, that's, when Madhai and Jagai were like one person and two bodies, when Jagai was, con, con, was transformed, Madhai became transformed too. And he said to Lord Chaitanya, whatever, whatever I ever did, he did, and whatever he ever did, I did, so please give me what you just gave him. <laughs> and Lord Chaitanya roared at him. He said, no, you must be punished. You cause blood from the head of Nityananda. And he was very humble now. With folded hands, he prayed, so many demons, and now I understand who you are. You are Vishnu, you are Krishna, you are the Supreme Lord. Ravana, you so many demons that you gave liberation to. And they hurt you. He said, yes, they hurt me. But you hurt Nityananda. He is millions of times more, his body is millions of times more dear than my own. I said, what can I do? He said, your only hope is you must take shelter of Nityananda Prabhu. If he forgives you, you will be forgiven. Madhai fell at the feet of Lord Nityananda Prabhu. And Lord Chaitanya said, Nitai, if you embrace him, he will be delivered. And Lord Nityananda Prabhu picked him up and embraced him with love. His head still, head still bleeding. With tears of affection, he embraced Madai. And then he said, my Lord, he is your property. I offer him to you. Lord Chaitanya said, give up your sinful, impious activities. Become humble servants of the servants of the Lord and chant the holy names and I will give you the ecstatic love of God. The love that even Brahma and Shiva and the Kumaras are longing to achieve. Madhai surrendered. Lord Chaitanya took them back to his own house and accepted them like their own family and had kirtan. And in that kirtan, as Jagai and Made were dancing with all the devotees, Lord Chaitanya said, don't ever think anything of them except that they're pure devotees of the Lord. I have taken all their sins. And just to show you that I have, just look. And suddenly Lord Chaitanya's beautiful golden body turned black from the sin. He said to Adwaita, what do I look like? Adwaita said, you look like Krishna, Shamsundar. <laughs> and he said, he said, chant the holy names and all the sins of Jagai and Madhai will be removed from my body. And wherever anyone is blaspheming or criticizing my beloved devotees, that's where the sins will go. So Jagai and Madhai 
became the intimate devotees of the Lord. But still, Madhai couldn't get over that he hit Lord Nityananda. So he was crying. And one day he saw Lord Nityananda and Lord Nityananda said, I've already forgiven you, why are you sad? He said, because I caused harm to your body. Lord Nityananda said, if a child kicks his mother or father, the mother and child doesn't mind. You are now like my own child. Whatever you did to me was like a little kick of a baby. I love you. You are forgiven. He said, but what about all the other people that I caused harm to? I don't even know who they were. I was so drunk. Nityananda Prabhu said, go to the bathing guts of Navadweep. Clean them and decorate them. And everybody that comes to them, offer your prostrated obeisances. Offer garlands, offer gifts, beg forgiveness, and in this way, be the humble servant of all living beings. And Madhai would not only clean the existing guts and offer all love and respect to everyone, but he dug his own gut and invited everyone to come and whoever came he would prostrate himself, offer menial services and beg forgiveness. If I've ever done anything that caused harm to you or anyone you love, knowingly or unknowingly, please forgive me. I'm your servant. And when people saw Jagai and Madhai living as strict brahmacharis, chanting at least 200,000 names of Krishna every single day, and serving all living beings, their hearts melted. And sometimes people were so angry with the past activities of Jagai and Madhai, they would take a rock and throw it right at Madhai's head. And with great humility, and affection, he would pick up that rock and give it back to them and say, throw it again. I deserve more. And even those people's hearts would... Jagai and Madhai became Trinada Pisunichena, Turori Basishnuna, Amani Namanadena Kirtaniya Sadahari, humble like the grass, forgiving, tolerant, and loving like the tree, they offered all respect to others, expected none in return. In this spirit of the servant, of the servant, of the servant, with pure love, they constantly chanted Krishna's names. This is just one little drop of the glories of the compassion of Lord Nityananda Prabhu. Srila Prabhupada understood to spread this message of Lord Chaitanya all over the world, as his Guru Maharaj asked, requires the maximum mercy of Lord Nityananda Prabhu. Srila Prabhupada told us that Nityananda Prabhu is the original Guru, Balaram, who forgives us, who guides us, who restores our original consciousness and prepares us for the pleasure of Sri Sri Radha Krishna. One cannot attain realization of Radha and Krishna without this mercy of Lord Nityananda Prabhu. Srila Prabhupada did something that was never done in history. He was inspiring literally hundreds and thousands of people in every continent in the world to put Gornitai deities in their homes to bring the presence of Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya to their own homes. Yes, I wish we had a million hours to speak here. Lord Nityananda was Parama Karuna Pahundui Jana Nitai Chandra. These two brothers were supremely merciful. 
And to close his lila, Lord Nityananda came back to Ekatraka and entered into the form of Bankim Rai, the murti that he discovered in the river Yamuna here in Ekachakra. He was born here. He left the world from here. And he is eternally residing here, performing his Nitya Lila, his pastimes here forever. Ekachakra is the place where with jubilant hearts we celebrate Nityananda Prabhu's compassion on all beings. And with utter humility we pray, we pray for his mercy. And we offer our deepest gratitude to Srila Prabhupada and those devotees who have given us entrance into the mercy of Lord Goranga and Lord Nityananda. Let us take a moment to offer this prayer of gratitude. Shri Nityananda Prabhu ki jai Nitai ko primanandi I am so late. It's only by Nityananda Prabhu's mercy that there's a chance for me to even get this train. But thank you very, very much.